Okay. Work bound we go. I do this a couple of times a week, driving into the university. It's about 90 k's, 75 minutes door to door. I enjoy the drive, enough. But in many respects, the commute is a means to an end. It's about getting to work, like so many people commuting in a tin can of some kind, be it a train or a bus or a car. But you could say that it's a massive waste of time. I do it five or six hours a week, 40 weeks a year for, it's been eight years now. A lot of lost opportunity. And so I've been adventuring my whole adult life, saving up time and money to go as far away from home as possible, up mountains and across seas. My whole shtick these days though is to ratchet back, do things more locally, try and shift my sense of perception. And so what about my commute lands? Can my commute offer me the adventures of high mountaintops and wide seas? So four years ago, I walked to work. It took me a couple of days. I left with just a big hat, clothes on my back, no food, no water. Yeah. Nothing. Jesus. I would force my hand at the road having to provide everything. I'd have to problem solve, and I'd have to really immerse myself in this place that I really just drift through each day. The wastelands of a highway are kind of like a wilderness of another kind. They're humanless. We don't stop. And if we do, it's to throw things away. It was a hell of an experience, a real insight into myself, the human condition, and this idea and concept of adventure. A few months ago, the Dean asked me to give a lecture at this new fancy building at the Mothership campus. I said, sure, John, I'll do that. Why don't I walk to the lecture from home? I've done it before, it was a cracking experience. And if there's one thing missing with adventure tales, it's often that they're told in the aftermath, well beyond the experience. This way, I'll walk in with a cracked lip and stinking to high heaven. I'll be a mirror of the road, having walked to work, again. I tell students all the time that I, I eat at home like I eat in the field, which I kind of do. It's a more basic form of living. Then I can be outside more, thinking more, doing stuff. I actually really like the, the taste of plain pasta. Now, if I put a sauce to this, I don't taste the pasta anymore. Well, maybe I do, but. <laughs> What's happened in four years? I'm a different dude. You know, I'm married now and this little kitchen's different to when you were here last time. Kitchens kind of represents where most people spend the majority of their time in their house and it's where all your comforts are as well. So as soon as you leave your house and leave your kitchen and all you have on your, are your own devices, these are the kind of things you think about and they're the kind of things you miss. But otherwise, I want to streamline the trip. So essentially, when adventurers go adventuring, they only take what's necessary, the bare minimum, to get the job done. That's the commuter. So this is the lace-up. I didn't do this last time. I thought I'd be able to walk, a, I don't know, at least some of the way without shoes until I found some. And there's bits of sand in there. I think there's a couple of snails <laughs> still swirling around in my toes. They feel completely disgusting and yet really good. Of course, that was flawed. I have white feet and they fell apart after eight Ks and I had to go to the backup pair of shoes. So this time around, I'm wearing my most worn pair. God, good flexibility, bro. Um, last time I found a heap of money, well, about five bucks worth, which is a good meal, and I didn't spend it. I thought, ah, uh, I'll see how much I can gather up. But this time, if I happen to see a little food vendor along the way, I'm gonna buy something. I found this on the highway last time, and I thought, oh, it's kind of Red Baron-esque. 
And because it's cold, I have no idea where I'll sleep tonight, what I'll wrap myself in, what my swag will look like by then. Yeah, we set these arbitrary rules for ourselves when we go places and do things. And my last set of rules, not wearing shoes and not wearing sunscreen was stupid. I'd be burn in a blizzard. Think of all your mates that have gone and done Europe. You know, they've been to Europe for a couple of weeks and they come back and they say, yeah, I've done that country, I've done it, I've done it. I've been here 35 years and I haven't done the 85 kilometres between here and work. All right. Half of my walk today, I think, will be, I'll be pissed off at humanity and the other half I'll be thinking, wow, what an incredible species we are and what we can do. I think adventure and commuting have heaps in common. Both are about not being late, be it a lecture or a mountaintop, tide or a Zoom meeting. And having to be on time means fewer distractions. Geez, that looks neat. See, I've never eaten a rose petal. It tastes like it smells. Yet distraction shouldn't be a dirty word. Being distracted is where I learn the most. I've never met this goat. I've drove past it most days. How are you? Yeah, you're a friendly bugger, aren't you? And sure, this is a stunt. We can't all spend two days getting to work. I'm doing this to question habits and formulas of a modern human and to experience and not imagine counterpoints to my everyday. So what starts is the, the, the swaggy's dilemma. What do I take and what do I leave behind? Water bottles, bits of plastic, cool stuff on the side of the road, you know, because then you've got to carry it. And that's the beauty of starting with a blank canvas of, I probably should have started nude, but I would have got arrested too early. <laughs> Thought I'd found a, um, a lip balm up the road, but it's actually just a uh, oral antibiotic for a dairy cow. And oddly enough, now that I've picked it up, now that I've picked up this bit of useless plastic, I feel obliged, I don't, I feel like I don't want to throw it back again. I can walk on a road unless it says I can't, unless there's a sign saying I can't, or a policeman tells me I can't. So they're the two barriers. Shoelace, first bit of kit that I'll take with me. A little bit of community service. Ah, a punching bag. I live on a hill, and so I'm now descending down to the highway, out of the forest, down to the flats, and then onto the big four or five or six lane highway. The metaphor is not lost on me at all that you're sort of descending into another world. Look at that, it's even buttered. <laughs> it's probably perfectly fine. It's a bit manky, I can't see any mold, but I've had two breakfasts, so I think I'm just gonna leave it. Why would you throw out half a loaf of bread? Mmm, no. Nah. That's a nice gumboot. I find the other eight, Helen's in luck. Found some earplugs, good one. Might be good for the highway, because the highway's bloody noisy. That'll blow up the lawnmower, man. Mmm, I reckon there's still a bite in that. Let's have a go here. Half a bite of a banana. Good, oh, good too. Perfect ripeness. Marvellous. Sweet and sour sauce from Macca's. Awesome, unopened. Ah, oh, fuck. And I'm also just starting to get into the rhythm of the walk. There's one thing that's rhythmical, that's walking, you know, it's so repetitious. Of this 90 odd kilometers that I'll do, that's over 100,000 steps. You really just become a metronome. And I'm sort of starting to get to the threshold of where I know and where I, I don't. One is commute lands and the, one, the other one is homelands. And I know who owns these paddocks and that there used to be an orchard here and that's Labatouche Creek and this is where my mum grew up, the mountains I run in. And you know, maybe the closer I get to work, the less I care for what's on the roadside and all the rubbish and all the stuff. Good roadside water. 
try and avoid the hepatitis C. I'm about to cross under the highway. And like any academic, I've got a bit of a theory that, well, I've got a theory, <laughs> or one that I prescribe to more than others, and that's roundabout theory. Because so much good stuff falls out of cars at roundabouts. You know, utes going around the corner, things flop out all the time. So I'm gonna have a good look around at the, the two roundabouts uh, near the highway. There you go, first cash. First cash, 20 cents. Roundabout theory. Man on the highway now and it's just freaking loud, you know. It's a bombardment to the senses. I really like finding golf balls. If I could be a professional anything, it'd be a golf ball hunter. But next to that is um, finding really nice bolts that you could, that have still got a good thread on them that you could actually use as a bolt. <laughs> and the highway is full of bolts. All the way from the USA, that bolt, it's a nice bolt. Aldo Leopold has this great quote related to roads and the human mind, saying that the more roads we have, the less beautiful our minds are as if our bodies and senses are underdone because we're no longer on our feet. I believe it. This is not beating up on roads, not really. It's more about advocating walking, and not just in pretty, serene and pleasing places, but commute lands, which are dirty and loud and bomb your senses. But they're often the most unwalked places on the planet. The mother load, two dollars in the road. Hard to get out. Ow! That is so in there. Yes! Two bucks! Cut myself whilst getting the two dollars out of the road. <laughs> first, uh, first break in five hours, 15 odd minutes. First time sitting down. Hips are a bit tight. Feels really good. Quite serendipitous when someone throws away a couch. Bastards. I, and I, I wax in and out of thinking humans are horrible and thinking humans are great. You know, a guy pulls over to give me a lift. Good on you. And then 10 minutes later, I hit this old country road and uh, it's just a dumping ground. And people have filled their old tent with rubbish and then thrown it away. Yeah, it's disappointing. Uh, so now it's finding a bed. So now it's being a swagman and looking for a tarp, some insulation, something warm, maybe something waterproof. Uh, yeah, so now I've got to sort of make home, in a sense. I haven't, I haven't been picking up tarps and plastics and things yet, but I will now for the next 20, 25 k's. I've been on my feet now for about um, uh, nudging eight hours. So I thought uh, it took five minutes R&R &R, and look what I've sat next to. So these are about 150 calories and I've had a, a little tiny bite of a banana. It might seem that this walk is just one great treasure hunt. But it's more than that because my well-being depends on finding usable things that others have thrown out. It's a cruel twist that the very thing I detest the most is going to sustain this commute. Far out, what do we have here? A duvet. It's a bit too big and heavy. But am I looking a gift horse in the mouth? Probably. 
I'll see how big it folds down to. I'm not sure if it's a duvet or some sort of 1970s tablecloth. Isn't it the closer I get to a city of four million people, the less I'm able to get clean water by natural means. So I think that says a lot. The closer I get to the city, the harder it is for me to find the very thing that makes me operate. And this is full of electrolytes, yo beauty. They're an athlete, they're an athlete. They're, they're, they've got no badness in them, whoever left this, other than being a litterer. I think most of the honks too, you know, you get a, a sense for honking that they're either trying to call you an idiot or going, good on you mate, you're swaggy, you know, and I think most of them are positive. I don't know why I think that, but. <laughs> yeah, I can feel it. I can feel it in my feet. I've got my running shoes on. My running shoes, I don't, um, I don't walk in. And so my heels are just spaghetti at the moment. I've got um, Anything Goes, that song, in my head. <laughs> Run repeat for the last bloody two hours. You know, it's pitch black and you've got huge streams of cars only five or six foot from you doing 100 kilometers an hour and you're just there wandering along in your own little world. That's kind of surreal. It's a Salvador Dali moment because you, you sort of, no one really does it. Bless them, people pull over and, and think you're in trouble. Good on you for stopping. See you, mate. You know, they don't think you're doing this for an adventure or doing it for your own state of mind. They think you've stuffed up and you're on the bones of your ass and you've got to walk, walk there yourself. Chick a dee. Hi, oh, you look good. You look okay. Hi. <laughs> hi, hi. There you go, you can have that now. Oh, thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, that's right, there you go, well done. Where's good for? County money. Wow, it really is banged up. Check out this one, it's not even money, <laughs> but it was so impressive, I thought, back in medieval times, that would have, you could buy a horse with that. See, that's, that's not even Australian, that's Malaysian. <laughs> cool. It Nine smells. Ten. <laughs> That's probably me. Can money smell? <laughs> so I might spend five bucks on dinner and then four dollars twenty-five on breakfast. Did so you bring him a doona, Helen? He found a doona. I didn't he even need to doona. bring him one. Yeah. Okay. Wow. wow. So were you spending the night with him? No, no, no. Hell no. It's cold out here, and uh, you should see the look of the doona. I think I'm in perfect harmony. Chips. Dorito chips. She's not yeah, impressed. I I don't like his choices, Cherry. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I think it's all legal tender. Anyways. I had to dig that one out of the road. I'm not going don't to... talk. Just enjoy it. Did you know that there are other shops in here besides the service station shop? A pasta would have been good. Of course. And so would a, so would a masseuse in a hotel right now, but that's, <laughs> you know. Well, you have, have you noticed that there's other food, like the food court over there? I did this last time and I just went and laid in the bush. Imagine if I required air as well. What a perfect little, a perfect little station. Give yourself some air and water. I've got a beanie to put on. The gulls. Right, that's gold. House paper. That goes on first. A towel and it's somewhat clean. Well, that's ridiculous. Oh, my bloody water bottle leaked, the bastard. Oh well, and that, I reckon, pretty bloody good. Don't need to wear shoes to bed. They can have the night off. Sleep's really important, but feeling safe is just as important. You just think, would other humans think there is a human sleeping here? And no, so I'll sleep really comfortably. And that's it. Rock and roll. Nine o'clock. It's about right. Haven't brushed my teeth. I feel a bit, a bit feral. But we're done. Jeez. All right. 4 a.
a.m. sleep. Um, I'm not actually sure I've slept. That was really good rest. And there's the highway there. Oh, those heel blisters are bad. That's a doozy. Here I am in this great trade-off. What I'm gaining in roadside experience in the name of adventure, I'm losing in work time. Which, depending on how you look at it, would determine if you'd ever walk for two days to get to work. It's about putting value on such a thing, much like baking your own bread or taking karate lessons. I think that experiences like this are the essence of being human, which to me is our ability to question everything we do. Which is just great. Because man, it's noisy and high speed and it's just hectic. The traffic, the traffic sound just completely blocks out all natural sounds, you know? And freeway, you're a little beauty. Oddly enough, it feels better to um to slightly jog because of these stupid runners. First traffic light of the trip. Got the green, it's a good start. That's a good looking apple. It's been bird eating rather than human eating. I'm happy to share an apple with a bird. Oh yeah. That's a beauty. doing well. I'm doing a Roman run too, so when I shuffle along and I don't actually touch down much with my heel, it's much nicer. Down the phone, found a nice Samsung. Battery's dead. 32 gigabyte, there you go, Brett. Nice to be in the burbs too and off the highway, you can think a bit more with slower car traffic. I've had a lot of negative honks this morning. You know, yesterday I think I had positive honks. I had negative honks today. <laughs> If adventure is about anything, it's about finding a newer version of yourself in hard to reach places. A main road that you regularly commute is obviously not a hard to reach place. So much so that you have to reinvent your idea of adventure if you're willingly set out across these mapped and often dead, fiddled with terrains. I'm, I'm fairly uncomfortable right now. My feet are, I've got a bit of chafe. I'm really hungry. Um, and yet I, I'm here by choice. And so I really like that choice. And so I've kind of got to be optimistic about those bad things. I don't really think they're bad. I think they're great because I can feel them. I've been fantasizing about this and um, sure enough, here in Dandenong and there's a five buck note. Look at that, making bacon. Good timing. What'd you get? I found five bucks in the bush and turned it straight into a giant cookie, whatever it is, half moon, and a Coke. 80 k, so a couple of marathons to this point almost. Um, I can feel it in my legs, for sure. So what a, what a treat it is to just sit against a gum tree and have a think about things for half an hour. I didn't think I'd get this luxury. I thought I'd be busting it a bit more to get there on time, so this is good. Didn't need to get up so early. I've been planning this thing for a while, even just a two day stint from home, really different experience in life. Oh, this is a, that's all, all I'm doing it for. It's a really different experience. And I'm already starting to miss it, miss the, the newness of it all. And that's why you don't sit down when you're on the job, because it sucks getting back out. Everything changes you. 
You cannot take away what just took place. Until I start to go batty, maybe in my older age, that is now with me. It, it is part of the fabric of Bow. It is my worldview. It's how I teach. It's how I see the world. It's how I see that road from that point on. And yes, a lot of it will just filter away as I get further from the walk, um, but it's still there. Famous for our balls, yeah, well, you got me. I'd go in for some balls, but I've got to go give her a workshop. Oh, if you think about something hard and long enough, it comes true and it's doing it a kilometre from the office. That is so good. Oh, I'm eating the skin. I'm not quite sure what the point is when you, the last five or 10 K, you think, righto, Bo, what are you, what are you doing this for? <laughs> but the, the love is returning. Don't you worry, it's a hell of a trip. So bloody weird and different. I've had more experiences in the last 30 hours than 10 years of driving that route. So that's the point. And it's hard. So there's the adventure part of it. You know, just to stitch it together. I've only ever given one workshop in here and I don't know my way around at all. In fact, I only bought a few um, things with me that I actually kept. And one of them is a map to tell me where to go. 141, up. You can over theorise a walk like this in the same way you can undersell it. As I made eye contact with our caterer, I considered my opening line I'd give to a room full of people. What's the message here, Bo? Well, you can choose to do something like this or not. I chose to walk to work, and this is why. I'm only, called to three, I'm only, what's that, one day and seven hours late. Sweet. Oh, and look at that. There's been some sort of function on and the sandwich is there. Did you see that? In the door. There you go. There's my commute to work. I suppose we turn on the light, turn the computer on and start work. <laughs> Tell you what, no, let's hit those sandwiches up.